Hello, Nescom Immersive Audio student. In this video, I will demonstrate how to import audio from the Sound Devices Portable Recorder into Pro Tools. And since that audio we're going to import is going to be ambisonics, we're going to need to convert it from the raw Type A format to the Type B format that you can work with within Pro Tools for editing and mixing and that sort of stuff. I will also demonstrate how to convert that Type B ambix, ambisonics audio, back into discrete audio so we can route it to the monitoring system of your choice. You have a choice in this assignment to either monitor discreetly through the speaker system or you can use Dolby Atmos. So getting started, I have a Pro Tools session open and my Pro Tools session in the IO, I've set it to directly feed the loudspeakers. I am not using Atmos. And you can go either way in your work on this particular assignment. Uh, Atmos may actually have some advantages if you want to work in Atmos. You're probably more familiar with it working all semester in it. You also can use your template, your mix template, and all the effects you may have created. You can also more easily create binaural mixes, which you could take your multi-channel mix and listen at home or on headphones. But I'm going to use just a discrete, you know, directly to speakers output. It will be just, it's just simpler. It's easier. Okay. So there are different ways to get audio files off of the Sound Devices recorder. You could eject its little card and you could put that in some sort of card reader and con connect it to the Mac that way. Or the method I'm going to use here is that I have put the recorder in file transfer mode in a previous video I've created shows you how to do that. And then I've connected the recorder via USB-C cable directly to the Mac. And then with that done, I can go to the desktop and I can see, let's close some of these folders here, that the mix puri is connected and is showing up as a, as a, you know, an external hard drive or, you know, place to put data. Anyway, so when I open it up, I will see different folders for the different projects that have been created. And the one we're going to open today is this dated 9 to 24. So I would recommend you grab your audio and maybe copy it off the mix pre, perhaps put it on the desktop or some other location. This uh, ensures that if you uh, have to give back the mix pre to EDC and it gets erased, you don't lose all your audio. So I made a backup here. It will take a second. It's a, the tra file transfer is a bit slow. But once that audio is on my desktop, I can go into Pro Tools and I can import it. Now you can directly, we'll go to the desktop here. Um, and there's the file, the folder I just copied. You can grab the audio and drop it on Pro Tools, but don't do it. Don't do it because, uh, and it really depends on the file format and all that. But when you do that, Pro Tools does not necessarily make a copy of the audio files in your audio files folder. It may still continue to look at it on the desktop or if you dropped it directly from the um, the recorder, it will still look at the audio files on the recorder. This can slow down Pro Tools, and worse yet, if you eject the um, the files aren't all in the same place. So if you eject the recorder, you may lose the files, or if the desktop gets erased, the files will disappear. So you definitely want to use this other method for import, and that is file import audio. This is the safe way of doing it, and that is C Command Shift I. And then locate it. If we go to the desktop, right, it's in 90224. And there it is. I'll take the, the, the second one. You can actually play this through the Mac speakers if the control uh, central station is set to Mac monitoring. So I'm hearing my myself and my daughter there. Um, so I'm going to import that audio file. I'm not going to hit add if it gives you the option of add you definitely want to convert do note how many channels there are if you see six channels then you've done the, you've set up the recorder properly if you see more than six then you're going to have to sort through and figure out what channels you're actually looking for but six is the proper way it should be set up and i convert and why is it converting one of the reasons it's converting is you should i should have made a session that was 48k and i know i made a session that was 48k because dad man only works at 48k unless i tweak its settings and the the portable recorder keeps seeming for me to switch back to 441 and so it's converting that 441 file to 48k for me right now and that's why convert came up as an option so i'm converting it it's going to make copies of the audio files now in my audio files folder, which is where I want it. 
And of course, it's, it's taking a little bit longer because it's converting 44.1 to 48K. I would have liked to record it at 48K. That would have technically sounded better. But hey, the recorder sync keeps resetting itself. So new track located at the session start. And there you see the six tracks. And so this is a bit confusing, but if you set it up properly, the Sound Devices recorder is going to record four discrete tracks for the four inputs that you see on the front. And it's going to also report record the stereo mix of those four. And if it's configured differently, we'll also give you tracks for um, inputs five and six. So what these first two channels right here, these are the stereo mix. One and two are. And you don't need those. And so I'm going to immediately make those inactive just to remind me that those are not what I want. And these four, three, four, five, and six, those are the four ambisonic channels from the Ambio microphone. And what we're going to want to do here is Command Shift N, make a new audio track. And this is kind of fun for you if you've never done this before. You're going to make a first order ambisonics track because Pro Tools supports ambisonics, which is kind of neat. So I make a single first order audio track and I'm going to now grab these I'm holding shift down select these four and then I'm gonna hit control control down so when I drag these down I can't accidentally drag it sideways in my track and now we've got our ambisonics and you may want to even option option control drag so it leaves the original here maybe perhaps you want to keep this here in case you run into a problem maybe make these tracks you know inactive or something but either way we uh, we have made an ambisonics track. Now I had the level set too low here. You can barely see it. Uh, perhaps you know if I if I bring up the visual gain, it will turn up. Another option here, since I recorded very quietly, I'm going to add some gain here, oh, quite a lot of gain because I was learning how to use the recorder at the time. And so there you go. There's a bunch of a ton of gain. Um, so but this is my ambisonic track. Now you can't just route this to the loudspeakers. Uh, because it's ambisonics and also this is the raw file for format of um, this is the raw type A ambisonics file format and you want to convert this to type B to actually use plugins and processing and that sort of thing so on this track here let's put a, a converter now the microphone the Sennheiser Ambio microphone like all the other ambisonics microphones comes with a cool plugin however it currently doesn't work at Nescom because the plugin is out of date and does not support Pro Tools in native silicon mode so I had to purchase a, a plugin to do this conversion and it's made by a company called Audio Brewers and it's AB Transcoder so open it up it's kind of a boring looking plugin but your input is going to be a format one that's what this particular microphone's order of cabling of its outputs are there are other ways it could have been done but that's it uh, if you had the microphone set up straight that's what you want it if it was at it you know set up differently this is how you'd configure the microphone and how how it was configured when you did the recording and your output is ambix so I did record the microphone upright a format one and output is ambix which is sort of the current standard for ambisonics and you don't have to do any gain changes here I guess I could have done my gain here instead so with that done it is now outputting ambisonics from this track now again I can't really hear ambisonics on the speakers I have to convert the output of this channel to get to the local speakers and back to discrete monitoring but you are going to probably have multiple channels here from multiple takes and the assignment is to create two soundscapes in ambisonics so you would have at least two ambisonics tracks here uh, and they're gonna have different audio on them so you probably want to take all these guys and route them to an ambisonics bus and then have that bus get converted into a, a track a configuration that you can send either discreetly to the local speakers or to Dolby Atmos so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a bus master here so I'll make a uh, ambisonics first order Oop, that was a way to go wasn't it first order ambisonics aux input so this is my ambisonics master maybe you want to call that your ambix master and um all my tracks are going to need to route to that 
but I'm going to need an ambisonics bus to get these to that. So I'm going to open up the IO and under bus, I'm going to make a new ambisonics first order bus. And this is kind of basically our mix bus. You know, that's all it really is. Mix bus. And that's a, too long of a, a bus name, wasn't it? So, and why I say it's too long is because well, these three need to go to it. So I'm going to option shift, send them to the Ambisonics Mix bus. It'll be hard to see that, Ambisonics Mix bus. And then that's going to feed our master here, Ambisonics Mix Master. Now, we are going to send this, if you're using Atmos, you would send this off to your bed, or probably even better yet, your object bed, your 714 object bed. But if you're like me and you're just using sending directly to speakers, I can send these right to my speakers. That's easy to do. And uh, why? that's fine. And so, but it doesn't convert ambisonics to the speakers I actually need another plugin to do that conversion process so we have one plugin that will do this a multi-channel native plugin and it is going to be it's made by perfect surround and it's pentio and pentio is going to be a first order ambisonics in and we want it to be 714 output to do that so this is converting four channel ambisonic into 12 channel 7.1.4. You've got some choices over here how you want to do it. You just want to use Ambix first for order. Again, you're not using Fuma or any of these other ones. You're not going to tweak anything. It's just going to hopefully work. Um, you can even visualize if you want. Oh, my screen resolution won't support that. But now, I'm going to change my monitoring over. I should hopefully hear and again, I should hopefully hear this ambisonics track here. These other two aren't being used, so at the moment I can just disable them. This guy should be feeding, that guy should be feeding my speakers. It's recording. I've turned the gain down to roughly... Now you don't have to get off. <laughs> this is a 3D... I don't know if you could hear my 8-year-old daughter saying poop, but she just said poop in the ambisonics microphone. And I am indeed hearing an immersive. So... A lot here to show, but essentially, we've imported our audio from the Sound Devices recorder. We've figured out which of the tracks are the four that are ambisonics. And if you imported in a different, if you ended up having the settings wrong on the portable recorder, you may have seen in eight channels here. So find the four that have similar levels and drag them down to a first order ambisonics track. Decode that. Ambisonics track, Ambisonics audio from Type A mic format to Type B Ambisonic Ambix, because that's what you can use for mixing and mastering and all that stuff. And we do have a few plugins, by the way, that you can mess with that are Ambisonics, including a phaser. Woohoo! And anyway, your different tracks route to a master bus, which I'll put Pentio on it, and a Pentio is coming in Ambisonics first order and out 714. And then you route this master main track to either your direct speakers if you're doing a discrete monitoring configuration, or if you're using Atmos, send it to your object bed, your 714 object bed. Okay? I hope this video helps out. Have a great day. Goodbye.